If you ever try to run an operation on a large number of S3 objects, well, you may have encountered a few challenges. It gets time consuming and complicated as the number of objects grows. But thankfully, AWS has finally released S3 batch operations, which addresses this very problem. Now, it's easy to run an operation against a large number of S3 objects with a single API call or a few clicks in the management console. Hi everyone, Mark with Root University, bringing you the best in cloud and DevOps training. And in this channel, we dive into today's most popular technology. We conduct product and service reviews, and we also check out new AWS features like this video. So if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. And if you have any questions during the video, take a look at the show notes below. It has links to documentation and other resources. So let's jump into the video. We're gonna start by describing terms. A job is the basic unit of work in S3 operations. It contains all the information needed to execute the operation on the objects listed in the manifest file. An operation is a single command that you want the job to execute. Each job contains only one type of operation with one set of parameters. Currently, there are five types of operations, and they are put copy object, put object tagging, put object ACL, initiate glacier restore, invoke the AWS Lambda function. A task is the unit of execution for a job. A task represents a single call to the AWS S3 or Lambda API to perform an operation on a single object. Manifests. Uh, manifest is an S3 object that lists object keys that you want AWS um, batch operations to act upon. Um, right now, there's two main types of formats. So one is the Amazon S3 inventory report, and the other one is the CSV. We're going to be using a custom CSV in this tutorial. For the custom manifest, you can see that it's a simple CSV file. Um, essentially, you give it a bucket and the object key. So it's a pretty simple one. And you can also have a CSV with version ID, which is kind of a recommended approach. And we can talk, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Again, bucket, object key, and then in this case will be version ID. So now for the fun part, let's log into the AWS console. Let's navigate to S3. We're gonna be creating two buckets for this tutorial. Uh, first bucket, bulk operations demo, and now creative to create. And then a second bucket called bulk operations demo report. This is going to be a location where um, batch operations actually um, produces a report result file for the operate the job that we run. Now, in the background here, I actually uploaded a uh, website, and that website also contained a manifest file on the root level of it, and it actually just contains again bucket name and a list of uh, object keys, which are just the HTML uh, files in the website. One important thing to note is that if uh, the objects in your manifest are in a version bucket, you should really be specifying the version ID for those objects. Uh, this is because the, the batch operation does not take a snapshot of the state of the bucket. So depending on the number of files you have in your manifest, the job may take a long time to run. And if you overwrite an object while the, with a new version while the job is running, and you didn't specify that version ID, uh, S3 is just going to perform the operation on the latest version of that object and not the version that existed when you created the job. So just keep that in mind um, because it may lead to uh, unexpected behavior. Next, we're going to actually uh, go into IAM. We're going to have to create a policy and a role. By default, uh, S3 batch operations does not have any rights to be able to perform the actions. Uh, we're going to have to explicitly grant those rights to uh, batch operations. We're going to click on policy. And we're going to hit create. We're going to come in here. We're going to hit JSON. And we're going to paste this JSON document. Now, if we take a real quick look at it, you'll see actually we're granting put object tagging, put object version tagging, get object, get object version, get object, uh, get bucket location, put object, and uh, get location. If you look at the last one, actually, that's for the reports. Um, now we hit create. Um, now we're going to give it a, a name. Let's call it batch tagging policy. And let's give it 
a description. Let's hit create here. Now we're going to come up and create a role. And this is what um, that batch operation is going to assume. Um, so let's create a role here. Uh, we're going to select the service of S3. And we're going to select uh, S3 batch operations. And we're going to click next. Now we're going to attach our customer managed policy that we just created. Next, uh, we're not going to specify any tags. Click review. Uh, let's give it a name of demo batch operations role and hit create. Now, one thing to note is if we kind of go into this role, you'll actually see underneath the trust relationship, we're actually giving um, batch operations um, trust to be able to, to assume this role. Now that we're done with IAM, we're going to head back over to S3 and we're going to click on batch operations. We're going to create a new job here. And here you'll actually see the manifest formats that we spoke about earlier. One was the S3 inventory report and the other one is the CSV. Uh, if you're curious about how you actually generate an inventory report, you click on bucket, click on the management tab, and you'll actually see the inventory here. And then you can use that as the input to your job. Let's go back to back uh, batch operations and let's create it based with our custom CSV. So we're going to navigate to the bucket here. Um, as I said before, we actually have a CSV at the root of this uh, website. We select that. We're not using version ID. So we click on next. This is where we select the operation. In this uh, tutorial, we're going to do replace all tags. Um, but this is where you would select the operation for your job. Uh, one thing to note again, the IAM policies that we created were really just spec were really specific to the uh, operation of, of of modifying tags. Now you would have to refer to the documentation um, to find the proper policies that you need to be able to grant uh, batch operations to perform the operation that you really want. So just keep that in mind. Now the the key we're going to do is we're going to create a key called content type. And we give it the value of HTML. And in that manifest file is all the HTML files on that website. So here you can give it an op optional description, uh, priority. Um, and this is where actually we want to put the report. And so that, well, this is why we created that secondary bucket um, is, is for that for the generated report. And then again, that's optional. So now let's, let's go down and actually select the IAM role that we created before. Um, this is what uh, batch operation is going to assume to be able to do these actions. Uh, it gives us a chance to actually review um, what we're creating, and then we're good with it. So let's hit create. So now you'll see it says uh, waiting uh, for your confirmation. So it gives you an opportunity to actually come in here, review the job, and actually hit confirm and run. Again, look at this, the details to make sure everything is good. And then you click run job. Now, when that happens, let's let's go back out to the, the main page here. And you'll, now you'll see it's an active state, right? Well, let's hit refresh real quickly. And you'll actually also see that it has 837 objects. Now it's completing. Now it's complete. So this one ran pretty quickly. Um, let's go to S3 just to validate that it actually did what we thought it would do. So let's go bulk operation demo bucket and let's pull an HTML file. And it should have a tag. Let's see, it says tag right there, one. Uh, if you look at the tag, you'll see content type equals HTML. This is just a simple example of how you can actually use batch operations against a manifest file. Now, one the other thing to note is that there's a report. So we did set it up to generate the optional report. So we come in results and look at it here. There's a CSV file. Uh, if you open the CSV file, it will actually take a look inside and you'll actually see um, it being successful on all those keys that we had in that file. If it didn't, you'll actually see error messages of why it failed. And that is it. Now you know how to use AWS batch operations. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave a comment below.